Well, the week-long general debate of the UN General Assembly has concluded. All 193 member states had the opportunity to speak on dominant issues like the Syrian and refugee crisis. Other major topics included the sustainable development agenda, climate change, the Palestine-Israel peace process, and the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. Now, for more, our correspondent uh, Li Ling Tan joins us from the headquarters of the United States. Hello there, Li Ling. Uh, how would you describe this year's meeting? How would I describe this year's meeting? Well, this UN General Assembly high-level week uh, was both high-profile and high-drama. Now, the start of the high-level week kicked off, actually, with two major high-level summits uh, to get the world to step up to help address the mounting refugee crisis described as the worst humanitarian tragedy of our time. And at the summits, we heard China come forward with new commitments among several countries. Chinese Premier Li Keqiang uh, said that China is providing $300 million more on top of previous pledges to assist the refugee and humanitarian effort. And the U.S. also announced that more than 50 countries uh, had agreed to provide $4.5 billion to aid refugee assistance to eight groups that provide assistance to refugees. Now, the high-level week, however, was sidelined by breaking news early in the week from Syria, in which uh, a deadly attack was carried out against an aid convoy that was operated by the United Nations and the Syrian Arab Red Crescent. News of that uh, aid convoy attack essentially launched the UN into crisis mode and several urgent and emergency meetings were held, although these meetings served in, turned out to serve more as a platform for the US and Russia particularly to accuse each other of having carried out or have been responsible to a degree over the aid convoy attack and also for uh, unraveling a fragile ceasefire that they had both brokered, a ceasefire that was in place for about a week. Now, acrimony also played out uh, during the UN General Assembly high-level debates when world leaders addressed uh, the General Assembly and delivered their speeches on, the, on their vision for their countries and their region and on how to uh, work collectively to solve issues. Issues. And some of the, the, the contentious issues we saw included the DPRK. We saw the DPRK lash out at South Korea and the United Nations over their joint military operations in the region. And we saw Japan and South Korea lash out at DPRK for its nuclear ambitions. Similar acrimony and clashes played out between Pakistan and India over Kashmir. And also Ukraine raged at Russia over its support of the rebellion in East Ukraine. So even though world leaders met here in pursuit of world peace, there was the fair share of tension as well. Right, Tandy Ling, you mentioned a lot of discussions, debates um, have, been, have been going on during the week. And what, what do you think are the major accomplishments and uh, what have the leaders failed uh, to agree on? So yes, there was, there was a lot of good news, but there was also quite a bit of bad news. Now, we talked about the bad news earlier. Leaders were unable to agree on what to do about Syria, for example, and we saw also an impasse on the DPRK and other regional issues. Syria was the main one, though, because after nearly, uh, after more than five years, world leaders here have not been able to reach some sort of a, a solution on how to resolve the Syrian crisis. But the good news, um, we did see movement on some uh, areas. There were some issues that world leaders here could agree on. And one of them was on the sustainable development goals that you mentioned earlier. There was forward momentum on that when we saw nations um, announcing their plans to implement uh, national targets to help meet the SDG 17 goals by the year 2030 to end poverty and hunger, to promote uh, health, education and gender equality. We also saw a lot of momentum on, on uh, the fight against climate change with more than 30 countries ratifying in the past week the landmark Paris Climate Agreement. And that means that the agreement could now come into effect by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you very much, Leading Town Reporting from the UN headquarters in New York.